Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, A Date with Destiny. So the episode starts off with Destiny. She has a photo shoot for Hype Hair Magazine. She looks really nice. She's dressed all in white. Her son is also going to be doing the photo shoot with her. Um, and during the photo shoot, her father comes and brings her flowers uh, to congratulate her for being on the cover of Hype Hair Magazine. Um, they hug and they kiss. And uh, the father gets emotional when he talks about how proud her grandmother would be if she were still living but she's definitely looking down from heaven and she is still very proud of her granddaughter Letitia Letitia comes in and uh, so they sit down they have a conversation about Vegas and everything and um, they talk about Tiffany and Letitia says that you know Tiffany has this thing of being really transparent, but she only wants other people to be transparent with her where she and then she herself doesn't really share anything about her life and she's not transparent about what's going on with her. And then Destiny tells Letitia that um, she's going to meet up with Tiffany for them to talk it out, you know, talk out their differences and whatnot. Then we go on to Marce Marceau and Martel. So they're having a business meeting, it seems like. And the business part about this show, I'm interested in it, but I'm not interested in the details of it all because I don't really understand what's going on. So I know that they're, they have this... Um, the Scots have this huge project called 47 Acres, and they're going to build a... I think this is what it is. They're going to build uh, an entire community of single home families. And I think they are also are going to live on this property as well. I'm not sure. Or are they going to live on? I don't know. So I don't really pay attention when they start talking business. On All I know is that they have this huge 47 acre project. I think it's a single home community that they're building. I think there's going to be, uh, I don't know how many homes. So Marcel is involved in it and uh, Martel is involved in it, I think. And, and I think maybe the Scots have a separate project where they're building like a compound for just their family. And where every family member, I guess, is going to have their own home where every family... I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. So Marcel and Martel are talking. And um, they're talking about uh, having Melody join in because... Uh, she's the one with the builder's license. Now, Marceau, he's more involved with commercial real estate, whereas the Holts are more involved, I think, with residential real estate, I think. So, Mar Martel needs to partner up with someone with the builder's license. He won't do it with Marceau because I think Marceau was more commercial, so he has to do it with someone else. And I'm thinking he's considering um, partnering with Melody. Um, I don't know why he would want to partner with Melody. Y'all people can't even breathe the same air without wanting to kill each other, let alone be involved in business where money's going to be involved. So I'm not understanding why Melody and Martel working together is even a hint of a suggestion to anybody, but there they are talking about it. Martel says that he would be willing to work with Melody. I wonder, I don't know why you don't get along with her. It seems like you don't even like her. I have no idea. Y'all can't even be on the same page with your children. And y'all have that in common. And y'all have the same goals with the children as far as wanting to take care of their children and wanting to provide for the kids and make sure that they're okay. Y'all can't even get on the same page with that. But y'all are going to get on the same page on a business deal where you can go, you know, a thousand different directions. I'm not understanding this whole conversation at all. Chris Fletcher comes in to join Martel and Marceau. He's a real estate broker. I guess he's trying to put this, whole, he's helping them put this whole project together. And then they discuss again the possibility of working with Melody. Okay, moving on to something less uh, dense. Destiny and Tiffany are meeting up because they need to hash out their differences. They meet up at the bar. Um, Tiffany, uh, Destiny looks really, really cute. She has on this top with like uh, multiple straps in the back and it looks really cute on her. Uh, Tiffany comes in. I'm not understanding. Look, I don't want to talk about clothes and style and wardrobe and all that stuff. And, and I don't, I don't want to talk about that because I'm not 
No one's calling me, putting me on the cover of any kind of magazine. Um, I don't care about fashion, my fashion, anybody else's fashion. I just don't care about clothes. But the only reason why I'm about to talk about Tiffany's wardrobe is because of the fact that she's on this show. And I'm just curious to see because a lot of the times when a new person joins these uh, reality TV shows, they kind of join in, you know, with their own clothes, with their real clothes. And then if they get signed back on for a second season, the glam squad comes out. So I'm just curious to see if Tiffany is going to uh you know glam up in season in the next season if she's going to come back the next season because when she walked into that bar to meet up with destiny i didn't understand what was she had on like a it was like a pink it looked like a pink t-shirt but it could have been a blouse it looked like she had on a pink t-shirt baggy oversized t-shirt which is also her thing she likes to wear a lot of oversized clothes and then she had on like a leather skirt it was like a knee length skirt or a calf length you would think it was knee length or calf length leather skirt and she had on some pink pumps <sighs> And um, her hair was, you know, really, really curly. I don't want to talk about the way people look. Like I said, I am not a beauty queen. I did not win Miss America. I have, I do not have it going on in the beauty department, whatever. But I'm just wondering if she, if she's going to keep up this style if she gets signed on for season two because she's a very beautiful woman. I just want to understand why she doesn't dress just a little bit better. Her clothes are always sort of like just plain like you're going to be on tv you're going to be on a national tv show with women who are glammed up to the gods why aren't you putting a little bit more effort that's my only question she looks nice she looks better than me she looks nice but i just have questions that's all so they sit down and Tiffany says to uh, Destiny that she even had second thoughts about coming she wasn't sure if she was she was going to come but she did show up and then um they talk about how Destiny just came on too, not Destiny, how Tiffany came on too strong into the group. And um, Tiffany defends herself by saying, well, you know, I'm just trying to fit in. I'm just trying to find my place in this group. And Destiny says, well, you know, it was the same thing with me, but I didn't come in trying to spill tea on people's marriages. You know, you came in hard and strong and it was just so uncalled for. Um, you're not even trying to really get to know anyone. You're not letting us try to get to know you. You're just coming in with the tea, with the gossip, trying to make this huge splash. And maybe she needs to kind of, you know, bring it down a couple of notches or whatever. So then Destiny, uh, so she, so Destiny challenges Tiffany, you know, how about you being a little bit more transparent about yourself? Now, I wonder maybe the reason why Tiffany has not been that transparent about herself, maybe because nobody's asked her, you know, maybe that's why she doesn't talk about herself a lot. Maybe nobody's asked her what's going on with her. I don't know. I'm just trying to, you know, play devil's advocate here. So, uh, Destiny tells her, you know, maybe you need to be a little bit more transparent about yourself, you know, um, give a little bit of yourself to the group instead of just trying to dig into other people's business. And then Tiffany says, well, if you want to know about me, here it is. I wasn't born, um, Tiffany. I was actually born Jamie Lynn Payne. She was given up for adoption. Um, she's the product of a biracial relationship. Her mother was white. Her father was black. Um, her mother had four other Caucasian children and she gave up Tiffany for adoption because she was biracial, which is really, really sad, really heartbreaking. So she was given up for adoption, I think into a biracial family, but, uh, she had no idea that she was adopted until she was 19 years old. And she found out that she was adopted by a neighbor. Her adoptive mother had confided in a neighbor that she was adopted. And so this neighbor, for whatever reason, decided to tell her when she was 19 that she was adopted. So that's her story. And when she found out that she was adopted, she happened to also be pregnant at the same time. And I don't think, I think she said that she was pregnant by one person, but she ended up 
marrying her high school sweetheart and i guess that was the one who probably helped her raise her child i don't know but yeah so she did share a lot about herself her story was really interesting and destiny says well you know we really have that in common because i grew up in the foster care system my biological parents didn't raise me so they have that in common tiffany apologizes for bringing up the whole liberic thing um at the tea and Destiny apologizes for threatening to drag Tiffany through three different cities at, in Las Vegas. So they're back on the same page and everything is fine with them. Tiffany even goes as far to invite Destiny to her anniversary party. Moving on to Melody and Chris Fletcher. So Melody has a meeting with the real estate broker, Chris Fletcher. Another, you know, I like that they are talking about business because I want to see when it comes to these um, reality TV shows, like this one and Real Housewives, there's so much cattiness and so much um, uh, nonsense, I guess, about relationships and who's sleeping with who and who's cheating with who and whose husband's cheating on who. You want to see, you want the women to just come off a little bit more well-rounded. Like there's got to be something else going on in their lives besides bed hopping, besides getting married, getting divorced, getting married, getting divorced. You know, their lives are so centered around the men in their lives. You want to know what's going on with them in other aspects, like with their businesses, which I don't have a problem with the business part of love and marriage. It's just, it's just too, I, I'm not really comprehending what they're talking about. Okay, so then uh, Melody has a meeting with the real estate broker, Chris Fletcher. And Chris is kind of messy. I don't know if he's trying to fight for a spot in the show or he wants his wife to get a spot in the show. But he comes off telling Melody, you know, uh, Martell uh, didn't want me to come to you first about the 47 acre project. Uh, he wanted me to ask him if I can come talk to you about it. I'm like, oh, Chris, why? you know these people hate each other. You know the relationship between Melody and Martell is extremely acidic and bad why are you up here telling melody oh yeah uh, he didn't want me to come talk to you he wanted me to talk to him first he wanted to leave you out of it completely i had to run through him first to ask him can i come talk to you and i'm just like Oof. you know that's gonna rub melody the, the wrong way completely the wrong way and it did so she didn't like that at all so you know she gets on her little soapbox about you know martell sneaky ways and um whatever so chris tells melody you know i had to come to you first because you're the one with the builder's license and my client wants me to do this the right way or whatever so of course i'm going to talk to you first so melody says that it's important for her to build generational wealth for her children and to leave a legacy for her kids so i guess she's going to want to take part in this whole 47 acre thing um in her confessional melody says that she believes martell is trying to undermine her um undermine her business wise and that uh, she will definitely be putting in her bid for 47 acres. And she's going to be putting in her bid, I think, for multiple properties, not just, you know, uh, one or two. Maurice and Martel meet at Maurice's office because, I guess, because of the divorce, Martel's credit is shot to hell. So he needs help because he's still in the real estate business. This is his bread and butter. So he can't do any business with a bad credit score. No one's going to want to invest money in you when you show that you cannot manage your own money. So it's important for him to build his credit back up. So he goes to meet with Maurice. Maurice is an attorney. He's also in real estate. He's also does credit repairing so maurice like you know what we got this i'm gonna help you but you're just gonna have to be patient because it's gonna take a while martel asks him well how long do you think i'm gonna have to wait before i can dive back into business and maurice says probably about 24 months martel's like no i can't do that but he has no choice and so maurice then um says to him that you know the business part, building your credit, you getting back into real estate or whatever he's trying to do, there's no problem with that. I'm more interested in, you know, the the person, you know, how are you as a person? How are things going? So they talk about mental health. They talk about the stress of being successful, you know, businessmen, entrepreneurs, etc. Maurice admits that all of this has taken a toll on him too. It's affecting his mental health as well because he has a lot going on. And he says that he wants to see a therapist. And Mar Mar Martel says, well, and he follows suit. He says, well, if you're going to see one and it goes well with you, I'm going to consider talking to one as well, which is really, really, really good. The help is out there, people. We just need to take advantage of it and not be ashamed when we need to reach out. Letitia meets with her therapist, Dr. Kitson Francis. And um, when this whole segment of the show started, I was wondering, you know, can 
Well, Letitia should be able to keep it together without her voice trembling and without her breaking down. So she meets with Dr. Francis. Um, she tells the therapist about Marceau um, not really feeling therapy because he asked about that. And she says, you know, well, it took me 14 years to get him in here uh, to convince him to come in. And um, I'm like, well, Letitia, it took him 14 years to walk into a, thera a therapist office, but you tricked him. <laughs> you didn't convince him or persuade him. You ended up tricking him. You know, like <laughs> I remember, oh, I, anyways, I'm not going to get off track, but it reminded me, I got to talk about it though. It reminded me of a episode on Seinfeld. Kramer needed to go see a doctor. And instead of seeing a doctor, I think he was taking uh, dog medicine because he had a cough. And then um, his dog or someone else's dog also had a cough or something. And they gave the vet prescribed the dog some medication. And Kramer decided, well, if it worked for the dog, it'll work for me. And Jerry was like, Kramer, you need to go see a real doctor. And he just refused to see a doctor. So um, Jerry tricked Kramer into seeing a doctor because he wouldn't walk into the doctor's office, you know, voluntarily. He had to trick him into seeing the doctor. And that's what this is what that reminds me of. Letitia had to trick her own husband to go see a therapist. So then um, Letitia tells her therapist that, you know, she had been feeling really burnt out because of the whole pandemic, being quarantined in the home, dealing with three children, dealing with multiple businesses with her husband, and pretty sure her husband, you know, not really being... Um, very hands-on in the home she even said that she feels like she has four children instead of three because she has to treat her own husband like a child by telling him you know to help out telling him what needs to be done around the house and you know sometimes he'll do it and sometimes he won't at least her kids will do it all the time because they don't want to make mama mad but you know whatever you know marcel don't care so she talks about that and um then they start talking about, she said that she had noticed a change in her husband that, you know, he was feeling, it was something was like, there was like a disconnect there with him. And um, he had expressed that he was depressed. So they talk about that as well. And then Letitia says that when she thinks about, she talks about her life and she says that she never really saw herself um, as being married with children that was never really in her plan because she says growing up she had a lot of responsibilities she was raised by miss wanda and her mom was a single mom and i guess she had other siblings i'm assuming and so she had a lot of responsibility she had a lot on her plate growing up so she knew that when she got older she really wasn't too concerned about getting married and having children because you know she was tired of being the one to take care of everybody else so she ends up meeting you know Marceau and um I, you know they fall in love they get married but when she got married she was already four months pregnant so she talks about you know in her confessional is this the life that she envisioned for herself the the life that she envisioned you know is this how she's living now how does this uh, measure up to what she saw for herself when she was younger Obviously, she loves her children. She loves her husband. But I'm guessing, you know, she's always wanted something more. Now, this season of Love and Marriage, it seems like we're not getting a lot of business Letitia like we did last season. You know, she I'm like, what's going on with her businesses? She was, I don't forgot what she was doing. She was, I don't know what she was doing. But, you know, she was, in, she was trying to get her real estate license she was doing speaking engagements and so this season we're not seeing a lot of that um but she sees her husband you know pursuing his dream she tells the therapist that she okay this is when she tells the therapist how she had noticed something was kind of off about marceau uh she tells her therapist that she asked her husband when they had dinner with um kimmy and maurice and he was talking about being depressed and all of that well he wasn't talking about being depressed at the dinner he was downplaying his depression in vegas he talked about how he was depressed but at the dinner with his wife his brother and his sister-in-law he basically was like you know what it's probably just stress so she tells the therapist you know she asked her husband well what do you need from me to help you and Marceau told her I just need you to listen more and um, it also comes out during this therapy session that Marceau believes that he's working hard because Letitia wants a lot of things and um, 
basically like, you know, he's working himself to death because Letitia is expecting to live a certain lifestyle. She expects to have certain material things. And so um, the therapist basically was like, you know, he's putting the responsibility of his depression on you. Like, because you want so much, I have to work so hard. And because I'm working so hard, you know, I'm really off kilter. Mentally, I'm really off. So they talk about that. And um, Letitia says that she doesn't blame herself really for Marceau's depression, but to her, material things are an expression of love because that's how her mother expressed love. Her mother was not the type of mother to do the hugs and kisses, to say the I love yous. And her mother's mother was not the type to do that. And it made me think maybe the reason why, and I think this is common among maybe, I don't want to, I'm just, I'm just, speculating. I'm not saying that I've researched this. I'm not saying this is 100% true or not, but I'm just speculating. I have noticed like with people that I know in my own life that in the black family, there's not a lot a lot of, you know, um a lot of uh, I love you's, hugs and kisses, a lot of we're not we don't make a lot of like emotional connections with our family members. Um we take a lot of pride in having a lot of stuff. And having money, having material things, having wealth. We take a lot of pride in that. Maybe the reason why is because we were, our history is so, is so, um, our history is so painful. And we were struggling just to make it another day. When you think about our slaves, when you think about life after slavery, segregation, racism, prejudice, um, how slavery itself, you know, how it destroyed the black family and life after slavery was not conducive in rebuilding the black family either. So because of what we went through as a people, you know, just trying to survive in society, just trying to make it another day in society, we were not able, we didn't have the luxury to try to connect emotionally because every day was a struggle. Every day was a grind. Every day was just about, you know, making it to the next day. So we didn't have the luxury of looking into our children's eyes or looking into our spouse's eyes and expressing all this love and adoration and connecting with our feelings because it was a jungle for us. It was a struggle for us. And so maybe that's why we are, we're not that, um, we're not known for being very uh, emotional, being expressing our feelings. Maybe that's why. I'm just speculating. I could be a thousand percent wrong, but I'm just speculating here. So she says that her mom wasn't that way with her, you know, with the I love yous. And her grandmother wasn't that way with her mother. They express love by giving things because, you know, when you're able to give, when you're able to obtain material things, it, it, it can be a sign of success for us because for so many generations, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't be, we couldn't get an education. We couldn't go to work. We couldn't, we were denied so much that when we get to that level of having money and being able to purchase things, it's a sign of accomplishment. It's a sign of success. And we, we shower gifts on our, on our relatives and our children, on our spouses, on whoever, because it's like, yes, I made it. And I want to share what I've accomplished with you. And I'm going to share that with you by buying you things. Maybe that's why. So I don't really see it as a bad thing when she said that, you know, my mother showed us love by buying us things. I don't see it as a bad thing. When you think about our history, you know, it was still an expression of love. Is it a different expression of love? But it's still an expression of love. So uh, I'm not faulting Miss Wanda or anyone else that, you know, I don't, I'm not faulting them if that's how they raise their children. Now, you don't want them to be focused solely on just obtaining things. You want to kind of have a well-rounded child. But... You know, it's not, it's understandable to me why buying things can be a sign of love in our culture. So, um, Tisha didn't tell Mars. Okay. So, 
Um, the therapist asked, oh, so they talk about Vegas and Tisha brings up, you know, how she had planned this vow renewal with Marcel, but Marcel wasn't down with it at all. So it didn't happen. And so the therapist asked, well, how did you feel about that? That, you know, you couldn't do the vow renewal. And she said that she was really disappointed that it couldn't be done. And then the therapist said, well, did you express this to your husband? And the vow renewal was really important to Tisha because her and Marcel had a really rough year with the pandemic and with these rumors swirling around about Marcel infidelity so to her the vow renewal was going to be a sign that you know their marriage was getting back on the right track but he didn't want to do it and she didn't tell her husband how she felt um about being disappointed which i don't know why she wouldn't but maybe she feels like marcel wouldn't care and so marcel his response was we don't have to prove anything to anyone you know you know me i know you we don't have to prove anything to anyone and so the therapist says well why do you feel this need to always defend him you know to try to prove to the world that he's not cheating on you that he's not a bad husband and she says that when she sees someone being lied on or lied about it affects her and she and this is her husband and when she sees that there's lies about him she wants to defend him she wants to stand up for him and so then the therapist says well how do you know what did you do to prove that there was no truth in these rumors and that's where the episode ended so we'll see what happens with that um all in all it was a good episode and um yeah so if you like this review go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you really really like it go ahead and subscribe and i will definitely be back to talk to you later bye